this count rate shall be pre-tax rate, that is, before any income tax effects. Discount rate should reflect current market assessment of both time value of money for the periods until the end of the asset's useful life and risk specific to the asset. In other words, it is the rate of return that any investor would require from an investment generating similar cash flows with similar timing and risk profile similar to cash flows generated by asset under review. When determining discount rate, we must not forget that any risk or any factor that was considered and included in cash flows shall not be incorporated into discount rate assessment and vice versa. So, for example, when our cash flows already reflect certain risks associated with the asset, discount rate shall not incorporate the same risks. Otherwise, this would have been counted twice and that could lead to distorted value in use. Now, as we have just learned, determination of value in use has two parameters, cash flows and discount rate. Let's first deal with discount rate as in this case it's an easy bit. There is an information that rate of 5% excludes inflation. So, it is a real rate. However, cash flows in management's projection have been inflated by assumed annual inflation rate of 2%. So, this inconsistency has to be removed. We can do it two ways. Either adjust discount rate by inflation rate to get nominal rate. Or, adjust nominal cash flows to real cash flows by excluding inflation effect. In this case, easier way is to adjust discount rate rather than cash flows, but whatever you do, you should arrive to the same value in use at the end. So, we have pre-inflation or real rate of 5% and inflation rate of 2%. Post-inflation or nominal sometimes called also monetary rate, is then calculated using this formula. We arrived at nominal discount rate of 7.10% that will be used in value in use calculation. Small note, why haven't we simply added the two rates together and get 7%? Because such an approach does not reflect multiplication effect of discounting or compound interest. Remember, you calculate interest in the second year as an interest applied on original principal plus interest already recognized in the first year.